Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing work on our Invest Arms Gamer Hawken kit. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below this video or shoot me an email. I prefer the comments though, uh, if anybody has any questions, especially about this particular aspect, because I can answer them publicly and transparently. Next up, I've got my nose cap here and we're going to clean this up. I picked it out really because it's small and I don't think it'll take too much to get it cleaned up. Our main areas are these two large curved faces here and this angled face. I want to try to work the longest face I can all the time when I'm cleaning up and filing like this. So I'm going to grip this in my vise like this, straight down. And I'll give you a, sh a side shot of this in the vise so you can kind of see how we're holding it, if we can. Being curved makes it a little tricky. There we go. That's how I've got it clamped in the vise. And we want to, again, be careful that you're not over tightening this here because you'll distort this curve and maybe even break your casting. That's not, you know, a knock on the quality of the casting. That's just the nature of castings. If you overstress them, you know, and, and muscle man it, you're gonna, you, you're gonna risk breaking your part. And you don't want to. You've got all the parts to finish here and uh, it's always good to finish with the parts that you have. So I just got my half round again. I'm using the flat side now because we have a convex curve. So I'm going to work around the face and we might have to shift this around so we can get to this area over here. But because we have a convex surface, we're going to use the flat side of our file and clean this up. <laughs> What we can do is, is shift up how we're, how we're holding it. Uh, so instead of trying to hold the part, I'm gonna hold a piece with a right angle, as you can see here in my vise, and support the part against that right angle, like so. And it's gonna make it a little tricky uh, to get the whole thing at once, but we're gonna do our best here. Um, holding it like we were, I just don't know that that's gonna work. Um, this here, I might show you how to make one of these, but it's pretty simple. It's just a chunk of wood that's curved with leather attached to the inside and the top of it and a couple magnets back here. This just drops in my vise like so and can rotate if I'm holding a stock or a, an odd shaped hardware part uh, or something like that. Really handy to have a couple of these set up in your shop. Okay, let's, uh, let's try again here. Sometimes all you can do on this stuff is, is hold it against a stiff surface uh, to work it. Again, not ideal, but we'll get it done here. If you're at home and, and this is how you have to hold some parts, you know, just know that you're not alone. That it's not, uh, you know, you can't necessarily go out and you probably could, I guess, spend a few hundred bucks and have a perfect solution, but, um, you know, you can get around, you can get around that. Now I want to be conscious of this line here between these two faces. Because I'm holding this with my hand, I'm kind of buggering up this edge here. But um, as I come in and start to work that face, we can start to clean up that line with our file. As long as we stay on target with it. We'll make sure that we're just continually indexed with that face, we're not wibble wobbling. And you can see there that line starts to clean up pretty quick. Now I'm not going to fully work that face uh, because you can see it, it cleans up pretty good. Uh, we're going to work on getting this a bit more cleaned up here on this side uh, before we go hog wild. Uh, then I'm going to kind of use that as a safety really for um, 
for my part knowing that I can come in there and clean it up if I work that spot. I don't want to mess with uh, my file and the vise here so I've just got about a quarter inch or so thick piece of plank and see if I can rest that on so I can work this side. I think because they can be tricky to hold, the times where these simple pieces might take longer than a more complex piece, as I'm experiencing now. You know, but don't worry about it. You'll get there. Just be patient, I think, is the main thing that I will say working on something like this where you have these complex curves and it's a little hard to get in there. Be patient with it. And you'll get there. So looking at it here, I have a few facets. Kind of, in, in, kind of, well, kind of indicate them here to you. So I have one there. Kind of have a big one there and one there. That's kind of how they alternate. And this just comes from trying to work this. So what we want to do now is come in with our file and try to even that up. And then our last step will be uh, cleaning up this side, I guess. And then we'll need to come in here and, and clean up this ramrod channel just a little bit. I'll find my Sharpie cap. Got that kind of cleaned up, but we still have this other face over here that's been giving us some trouble. Let me clean up that edge a little bit. Okay, liking that a little bit better. We're not perfect, but uh, that's okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift towards my to my sandpaper, backing it with my file. See if I can come in here and clean up that final uh, peak that we have. <sighs> yeah, that's working out well. Now you can see there, I have a little bit to clean up back here, we'll take care of real quick. But we have a pretty nice curve all the way around. Got rid of those lines. We have a nice even finish. So to clean up where I've kind of nicked back here, I'm gonna cut a slight bevel on that end. When I'm doing something like this, it's good practice to stick a piece of leather underneath. That way when I'm coming over here to this other side and I'm cleaning up this other side, I'm not dinging and scratching or denting um, my cleaned up face over here. It's just a good practice to get into as you're going towards the, the finishing of a kit. So this is really slow. I'm just cutting a nice even bevel there. Now I wouldn't feel bad at all about coming in kind of here working that face until it's clean. Again, want to make sure you're applying nice, even pressure on the file so that you're staying indexed with that face. It might not remove even, just, you know, depending on the casting, but you want it to finish even. And by keeping indexed with that face, you'll get it as close to even as you can. It's important to make sure on this that you're, or a face like this, anywhere else on any other part, you're trying to make a full stroke across that face and that's going to help you keep it even. Right now I have a little bit of, of uh, you know, speckling from the casting, the rough face of that in there. I want to make sure that I'm bringing the whole face down evenly. 
We're trying to. And you can always come in with that file back sandpaper and bring it in a little, a little more slowly. And really on that, if I'm doing something like that, I'll switch over to even a, a larger file. Just to make sure I have a, a nice wide face connecting there. With this face cleaned up now, I'm going to go through and, and show you how I'm going to clean up this ramrod channel here. I'm not going to show you how to clean up this other side because this is going to be a replication of this side. And the series is already uh, long enough as it is. So to get in here and clean up, what I'm going to do is I've just got a round file here. This is a Nicholson 5 16th number 185 and I've got some of my pretty coarse sandpaper here. Um, and I like just using the sandpaper on something like this because it's going to kind of mold uh, to the shape of all of this and uh, I don't need a file or a rasp that matches exactly. So we're just going to use, I mean this technique again is uh, file backed sandpaper and it just gives us a stiff support behind our sandpaper so we maintain crisp lines uh, of the part. So we're just going to run this through like this. And I'm just going to check it. And you can see there the color's already changing a little bit for us. Now because my file doesn't match perfectly, I'm going to touch the file against really the one side and then work my way over to the other side of this ramrod channel just to make sure that I'm getting all of the, the surfaces in here. Making sure to try to keep straight with the channel. I don't want this line here to get wavy or angled in any way if I can keep from it. I'm going to switch my sandpaper around here to where it's a little less worn. I'm just going to gently work that channel until we get it a similar consistency in surface finish as we see on the outside. Again, depending on what you're wanting to do or the, the look that you're wanting to get out of your kit, you don't necessarily need to <laughs> maybe polish the inside of this uh, to the degree that we are here on the video. This is a, a real utility point for these rifles and it ne doesn't necessarily treat it with uh, high, p high compassion. For me that's looking pretty good. You can see at least, I mean, down in here, I'm really not too worried about this section, but you can see here, kind of along this line, we have a dark spot there. And so there's a little bit of a change in the surface there um, that we can't really catch with our round. So I'm going to come in with my fine half round. Yeah, and that's touching that up fine. That's just giving us a little bit of a better curve matches it matches that casting a little bit better clean that up a little bit more uh, since I've been working these edges a little bit to make sure we're nice and uniform on this bottom channel I'm gonna get my half or my full round file here with my uh, sandpaper. We're just going to run through here nice full strokes and just clean up that surface along that curve a bit. And I'm checking it endwise, looking at it coming in here um, just to check that. Make sure we have nice even surface across there. Just a little detail that you can go through, a little extra time that uh, adds a little bit of style. Okay, I'm going to take care of this off camera and then we'll move on to our next part.
So after I cleaned up my nose cap here, I had a few details I wanted to show you uh, for things to consider that you might want to clean up on your parts. Uh, so I have some rough nicked edges here from working both sides. You can see right there we have kind of a, a gnarled file mark along here. And along our front here, this is going to be visible from the front of our muzzle. So we want to make sure that we're polishing and cleaning up this front face here as well. You can see right now it has just preliminary grinding marks, I believe, from the factory where they've probably removed some casting gates um, in here. So we want to clean that up. I want to flatten out this face here between these two ridges here. And I'm going to go ahead and clean up this bottom face too, even though this goes into our stock. Mainly I want to chamfer this edge as it goes around here a little bit, just to give it a little more style. And, and that's something you don't necessarily have to do at all. That's something I'm going to do though. Uh, I really like to clean up and, and chamfer some of these edges a little bit. I think it gives them a, a quick little clean up. I want a large flat file for this. Just like everything else, just large, even, flat strokes. I'm going to jump down now to a little bit of a finer file. And I'm not running this perpendicular to the nose cap, kind of as it sits. I'm running it diagonally across that surface so I get as much surface contact with my file as possible. Continuing with that, we also have this face up here that we need to clean up now as well. I mean, we needed to before, but I've nicked it here a little bit. So we need to clean that up, but I think that might be easier to clean up back in the stock because we have a little bit more to grip. So we're going to come around here to this top face now using my fine half round just because it's nice for getting in these little areas. I'm just trying to put a chamfer back on that edge. This too is a step that you could probably do with it back in the stock. And I think as far as that curve around is concerned, we'll do that back on the stock. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to establish my chamfer on that curve. I have access to it right now. You can see there we have a nice kind of flat, even color as the light reflects off of that. And coming back in here, we're going to give this a little chamfer. A smaller half round or round file might be a little bit better right here. You would probably be a little more aggressive with a smaller diameter, a smaller radius. That cleans up kind of where we've muddied up that edge. A lot of this stuff, <laughs> you'll hear, and it's not about being perfect, it's just about hiding your mistakes. 